The Swift Programming Language 5.6 Edition, book copyrighted by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Automatic Reference Counting. Swift uses Automatic Reference Counting, ARC, to track and manage your app's memory usage. In most cases, this means that memory management just works in Swift, and you do not need to think about memory management yourself. ARC automatically frees up the memory used by class instances when those instances are no longer needed. However, in a few cases, ARC requires more information about the relationships between parts of your code in order to manage memory for you. This chapter describes those situations and shows how you enable ARC to manage all of your app's memory. Using ARC in Swift is very similar to the approach described in Transitioning to ARC Release Notes for using ARC with Objective-C. Reference counting applies only to instances of classes. Structures and enumerations are value types, not reference types, and are not stored and passed by reference. How ARC works. Every time you create a new instance of a class, ARC allocates a chunk of memory to store information about that instance. This memory holds information about the type of the instance, together with the values of any stored properties associated with that instance. Additionally, when an instance is no longer needed, ARC frees up the memory used by that instance so that the memory can be used for other purposes instead. This ensures that class instances do not take up space in memory when they are no longer needed. However, if ARC were to deallocate an instance that was still in use, it would no longer be possible to access that instance's properties or call that instance's methods. Indeed, if you tried to access the instance, your app would most likely crash. To make sure that instances do not disappear while they are still needed, ARC tracks how many properties, constants, and variables are currently referring to each class instance. ARC will not deallocate an instance as long as at least one act of reference to that instance still exists. To make this possible, whenever you assign a class instance to a property, constant, or variable, that property, constant, or variable makes a strong reference to the instance. The reference is called strong reference because it keeps a firm hold on that instance and does not allow it to be deallocated for as long as that strong reference remains. Arc in action. Here is an example of how automatic reference counting works. This example starts with a simple class called person, which defines a stored constant property called name. The person class has an initializer that sets the instance's name property and prints a message to indicate that initialization is underway. The person class also has a deinitializer that prints a message when an instance of the class is deallocated. The next code snippet defines three variables of type optional person, which are used to set up multiple references to a new person instance in subsequent code snippets. Because these variables are of an optional type, they are automatically initialized with a value of nil and do not currently reference a person instance. You can now create a new person instance and assign it to one of the three variables. Note that the message John Appleseed is being initialized is printed at the point that you call the person's class's initializer. This confirms that initialization has taken place. Because the new person instance has been assigned to the reference one variable, there is now a strong reference from reference one to the new person instance. Because there is at least one strong reference, ARC makes sure that this person instance is kept in memory and is not deallocated. If you assign the same person instance to two more variables, two more strong references to that instance are established. Now there are three strong references to this single person instance. If you break two of these strong references, including the original reference, by assigning nil to two of the variables, a single strong reference remains, and the person instance is not deallocated. ARC does not deallocate the person instance until the third and final strong reference is broken, at which point it is clear that you are no longer using the person instance. Strong reference cycles between class instances. In the prior examples, ARC is able to track the number of references to the new person instance you create and to deallocate that person instance when it is no longer needed. However, it is possible to write code in which an instance of a class never gets to a point where it has zero strong references. This can happen if two class instances hold a strong reference to each other such that each instance keeps the other alive. This is known as a strong reference cycle. You resolve strong reference cycles by defining some of the relationships between classes as weak or unowned references instead of as strong references. This process is described in resolving strong reference cycles between class instances. However, 
before you learn how to resolve a strong reference cycle, it is useful to understand how such a cycle is caused. Here is an example of how a strong reference cycle can be created by accident. This example defines two classes called person and apartment, which model a block of apartments and its residents. Every person instance has a name property of type string and an optional apartment property that is initially nil. The apartment property is optional because a person may not always have an apartment. Similarly, every apartment instance has a unit property of type string and has an optional tenants property that is initially nil. The tenant property is optional because an apartment may not always have a tenant. Both of these classes also define a deinitializer, which prints the fact that an instance of that class is being deinitialized. This enables you to see whether instances of person and apartment are being deallocated as expected. This next code snippet defines two variables of optional type called John and Unit 4A, which will be set to a specific apartment and person instance below. Both of these variables have an initial value of nil by virtue of being optional. You can now create a specific person instance and apartment instance and assign these new instances to the John and Unit 4A variables. Here's how the strong references look after creating and assigning these two instances. The John variable now has a strong reference to the new person instance, and the unit 4A variable has a strong reference to the new apartment instance. You can now link the two instances together so that the person has an, apart an apartment and the apartment has a tenant. Note that the exclamation point is used to unwrap and access the instances stored inside the John and unit 4A optional variables so that the properties of those instances can be set. Here's how the strong references look after you link the two instances together. Unfortunately, linking these two instances creates a strong reference cycle between them. The person instance now has a strong reference to the apartment instance, and the apartment instance has a strong reference to the person instance. Therefore, when you break the strong references held by John and unit 4A variables, the reference counts do not drop to zero, and the instances are not deallocated by arc. Note that neither deinitializer was called when you set these two variables to nil. The strong reference cycle prevents person and apartment instances from ever being deallocated, causing a memory leak in your app. Here is how the strong references look after you set the John and unit 4A variables to nil. The strong references between the person instance and the apartment instance remain and cannot be broken. Resolving strong reference cycles between class instances. Swift provides two ways to resolve strong reference cycles when you work with properties of class type, weak references and unowned references. Weak and unowned references enable one instance in a reference cycle to refer to the other instance without keeping a strong hold on it. The instances can then refer to each other without creating a strong reference cycle. Use a weak reference when the other instance has a shorter lifetime, that is, when the other instance can be deallocated first. In the apartment example above, it is appropriate for an apartment to be able to have no tenant at some point in its lifetime, and so a weak reference is an appropriate way to break the reference cycle in that case. In contrast, use an unowned reference when the other instance has the same lifetime or a longer lifetime. Weak references. A weak reference is a reference that does not keep a strong hold on the instance it refers to and so does not stop ARC from disposing of the referenced instance. This behavior prevents that reference from becoming part of a strong reference cycle. You indicate a weak reference by placing the weak keyword before a property or variable declaration. Because a weak reference does not keep a strong hold on the instance it refers to, it is possible for that instance to be deallocated while the weak reference is still referring to it. Therefore, ARC automatically sets a weak reference to nil when the instance that it refers to is deallocated. And because weak references need to allow their value to be changed to null at runtime, they are always declared as variables, rather than constants, of an optional type. You can check for the existence of a value in the weak reference, just like any other optional value, and you will never end up with the reference to an invalid instance that no longer exists. Note, property observers are not called when ARC sets a weak reference to nil. This example is identical to the person and apartment example from above, with one important difference. This time around, the apartment type's tenant's property is declared as a weak reference. The strong references from the two variables John and Unit 4A, and the links between the two instances are created as before.
Here's how the references look now that you've linked the two instances together. The person instance still has a strong reference to the apartment instance, but the apartment instance now has a weak reference to the person instance. This means that when you break the strong reference held by the John variable by setting it to nil, there are no more strong references to the person instance. Because there are no more strong references to the person instance, it is deallocated and the tenant property is set to nil. The only remaining strong reference to the apartment instance is from the unit 4a variable. If you break that strong reference, there are no more strong references to the apartment instance. Because there are no more strong references to the apartment instance, it too is deallocated. Note, in systems that use garbage collection, weak pointers are sometimes used to implement a simple caching mechanism because objects with no strong references are deallocated only when memory pressure triggers garbage collection. However, with ARC, values are deallocated as soon as their last strong reference is removed, making weak references unsuitable for such a purpose. Unowned references. Like a weak reference, an unowned reference does not keep a stronghold on the instance it refers to. Unlike a weak reference, however, an unowned reference is used when the other instance has the same lifetime or a longer lifetime. You indicate an unowned reference by placing the unowned keyword before a property or variable declaration. Unlike a weak reference, an unowned reference is expected to always have a value. As a result, marking a value as unowned does not make it optional, and ARC never sets the unowned reference's values to nil. Important. Use an unowned reference only when you are sure that the reference always refers to an instance that has not been deallocated. If you try to access the value of an unowned reference after that instance has been deallocated, you will trigger a runtime error. This example defines two classes, customer and credit card, which model a bank customer and a possible credit card for that customer. These two classes each store an instance of the other class as a property. This relationship has the potential to create a strong reference cycle. The relationship between customer and credit card is slightly different from the relationship between apartment and person seen in the weak reference example above. In this data model, a customer may or may not have a credit card, but a credit card will always be associated with a customer. A credit card instance never outlives the customer that it refers to. To represent this, the customer class has an optional card property, but the credit card class has an unowned and non-optional customer property. Furthermore, a new credit card instance may only be created by passing a number value and a customer instance to a custom credit card initializer. This ensures that a credit card instance always has a customer instance associated with it when the credit card instance is created. Because a credit card will always have a customer, you define its customer property as an unowned reference to avoid a strong reference cycle. Note, the number property of the credit card class is defined with a type of uint64 rather than int to ensure that the number property's capacity is large enough to store a 16-digit card number on both 32-bit and 64-bit systems. The next code snippet defines an optional customer variable called John, which will be used to store a reference to a specific customer. This variable has an initial value of nil by virtue of being optional. You can now create a customer instance and use it to initialize and assign a new credit card instance as that customer's card property. Here's how the references look now that you have linked the two instances. The customer instance now has a strong reference to the credit card instance, and the credit card instance has an unowned reference to the customer instance. Because of the unowned customer reference, when you break the strong reference held by the John variable, there are no more strong references to the customer instance. Because there are no more strong references to the customer instance, it is deallocated. After this happens, there are no more strong references to the credit card instance, and it too is deallocated. The final code snippet shows that the deinitializers for the customer instance and the credit card instance both print their deinitialized messages after the John variable is set to nil. Note, these examples show how to use safe unowned references. Swift also provides unsafe unowned references for cases where you need to disable runtime safety checks, for example, for performance reasons. As with all unsafe operations, you take on the responsibility for checking that code for safety. You indicate an unsafe unowned reference by writing unowned unsafe. If you try to access an unsafe unowned reference after the instance that it refers to is deallocated, your program will try to access the memory location where the instance used to be, which is an unsafe operation.
unowned optional references. You can mark an optional reference to a class as unowned. In terms of the ARC ownership model, an unowned optional reference and a weak reference can both be used in the same context. The difference is that when you use an unowned optional reference, you are responsible for making sure it always refers to a valid object or is set to nil. Here is an example that keeps track of the courses offered by a particular department at a school. Department maintains a strong reference to each course that the department offers. In the ARC ownership model, a department owns its courses. Course has two unowned references, one to the department and one to the next course a student should take. A course doesn't own either of those objects. Every course is part of some department, so the department property is not an optional. However, because some courses do not have a recommended follow-on course, the next course property is an optional. Here is an example of using these classes. This code creates a department and its three courses. The intro and intermediate courses both have a suggested next course stored in their next course property, which maintains an unowned optional reference to the course a student should take after completing this one. An unowned optional reference does not keep a strong hold on the instance of the class that it wraps, and so it does not prevent ARC from deallocating the instance. It behaves the same as an unowned reference does under ARC, except that an unowned optional reference can be nil. Like non-optional unowned references, you are responsible for ensuring that next course always refers to a course that has not been deallocated. In this case, for example, when you delete a course from department.courses, you also need to remove any references to it that other courses might have. Note, the underlying type of an optional value is optional, which is an enumeration in the Swift Standard Library. However, optionals are an exception to the rule that value types cannot be marked with unowned. The optional that wraps the class does not use reference counting, so you do not need to maintain a strong reference to the optional. Unowned references and implicitly unwrapped optional properties. The examples for weak and unowned references above cover two of the more common scenarios in which it is necessary to break a strong reference cycle. The person and apartment example shows a situation where two properties, both of which are allowed to be nil, have the potential to cause a strong reference cycle. This scenario is best resolved with a weak reference. The customer and credit card example shows a situation where one property that is allowed to be nil and another property that can't be nil have the potential to cause a strong reference cycle. This scenario is best resolved with an unowned reference. However, there is a third scenario in which both properties should always have a value and neither property should ever be nil once initialization is complete. In this scenario, it is useful to combine an unowned property on one class with an implicitly unwrapped optional property on the other class. This enables both properties to be accessed directly without optional unwrapping once initialization is complete while still avoiding a reference cycle. This section shows you how to set up such a relationship. This example defines two classes, country and city, each of which stores an instance of the other class as a property. In this data model, every country must always have a capital city and every city must always belong to a country. To represent this, the country class has a capital city property and the city class has a country property. To set up the interdependency between the two classes, the initializer for city takes a country instance and stores this instance in its country property. The initializer for city is called from within the initializer for country. However, the initializer for country cannot pass self to the city initializer until a new country instance is fully initialized as described in two-phase initialization. To cope with this requirement, you declare the capital city property of country as an implicitly unwrapped optional property indicated by the exclamation point at the end of its type annotation, city exclamation mark. This means that the capital city property has a default value of nil, like any other optional, but can be accessed without the need to unwrap its value as described in implicitly unwrapped optionals. Because capital city has a default nil value, a new country instance is considered fully initialized as soon as the country instance sets its name property within its initializer. This means that the country initializer can start to reference and pass around the implicit self property as soon as the name property is set. The country initializer can therefore pass self as one of the parameters for the city initializer when the country initializer is setting its own capital city property. All of this means that you can create the country and city instances in a single statement without creating a strong reference cycle and that the capital city property can be accessed directly without needing to use an exclamation point to unwrap its optional value.
In this example, the use of an implicitly unwrapped optional means that all of the two-phase class initializer requirements are satisfied. The capital city property can be used and accessed like a non-optional value once initialization is complete while still avoiding a strong reference cycle. Strong reference cycles for closures. You saw above how a strong reference cycle can be created when two class instance properties hold a strong reference to each other. You also saw how to use weak and unowned references to break these strong reference cycles. A strong reference cycle can also occur if you assign a closure to a property of a class instance and the body of that closure captures the instance. This capture might occur because the closure's body accesses a property of the instance, such as self.sum property, or because the closure calls a method on the instance, such as self.sum method. In either case, these accesses cause the closure to capture self, creating a strong reference cycle. This strong reference cycle occurs because closures, like classes, are reference types. When you assign a closure to a property, you are assigning a reference to that closure. In essence, it is the same problem as above. Two strong references are keeping each other alive. However, rather than two class instances, this time it's a class instance and a closure that are keeping each other alive. Swift provides an elegant solution to this problem known as a closure capture list. However, before you learn how to break a strong reference cycle with a closure capture list, it is useful to understand how such a cycle can be caused. This example shows how you can create a strong reference cycle when using a closure that references self. This example defines a class called HTML element, which provides a simple model for an individual element within an HTML document. The HTML element class defines a name property, which indicates the name of the element, such as h1 for a heading element, p for a paragraph element, or br for a line break element. HTML element also defines an optional text property, which you can set to a string that represents the text to be rendered within that HTML element. In addition to these two simple properties, the HTML element class defines a lazy property called asHTML. This property references a closure that combines name and text into an HTML string fragment. The asHTML property is of type void returning string, or a function that takes no parameters and returns a string value. By default, the asHTML property is assigned a closure that returns a string representation of an HTML tag. This tag contains the optional text value if it exists, or Noakes text content if text does not exist. For a paragraph element, the closure would return p some text slash p, or p space slash, depending on whether the text property equals some text or nil. The asHTML property is named and used somewhat like an instance method. However, because asHTML is a closure property rather than an instance method, you can replace the default value of the asHTML property with a custom closure if you want to change the HTML rendering for a particular HTML element. For example, the asHTML property could be set to a closure that defaults to some text if the text property is nil in order to prevent the representation from returning an empty HTML tag. Note, the asHTML property is declared as a lazy property because it is only needed if and when the element actually needs to be rendered as a string value for some HTML output target. The fact that asHTML is a lazy property means that you can refer to self within the default closure because the lazy property will not be accessed until after initialization has been completed and self is known to exist. The HTML element class provides a single initializer which takes a name argument and, if desired, a text argument to initialize a new element. The class also defines a deinitializer, which prints a message to show when an HTML element instance is deallocated. Here's how you would use the HTML element class to create and print a new instance. Note, the paragraph variable is defined as an optional HTML element so that it can be set to nil to demonstrate the presence of a strong reference cycle. Unfortunately, the HTML element class, as written here, creates a strong reference cycle between an HTML element instance and the closure used for its default as HTML value. Here's how the cycle looks. The instance's as HTML property holds a strong reference to its closure. However, because the closure refers to self within its body as a way to reference self.name and self.text, the closure captures self, which means it holds a strong reference back to the HTML element instance.
A strong reference cycle is created between the two. For more information about capturing values in a closure, see Capturing Values. Note, even though the closure refers to self multiple times, it only captures one strong reference to the HTML element instance. If you set the paragraph variable to nil and break its strong reference to the HTML element instance, neither the HTML element instance nor its closure are deallocated because of the strong reference cycle. Note that the message in the HTML element deinitializer is not printed, which shows that the HTML element instance is not deallocated. Resolving strong reference cycles for closures. You resolve a strong reference cycle between a closure and a class instance by defining a capture list as part of the closure's definition. A capture list defines the rules to use when capturing one or more reference types within the closure's body. As with strong reference cycles between the two class instances, you declare each captured reference to be a weak or an unowned reference rather than a strong reference. The appropriate choice of weak or unowned depends on the relationships between the different parts of your code. Note, Swift requires you to write self.sum property or self.sum method rather than just sum property or sum method whenever you refer to a member of self within a closure. This helps you remember that it is possible to capture self by accident. Defining a capture list. Each item in a capture list is a pairing of the weak or unowned keyword with a reference to a class instance such as self or a variable initialized with some value such as delegate equals self.delegate. These pairings are written within a pair of square braces separated by commas. Place the capture list before the closure's parameter list and return type if they are provided. If a closure does not specify a parameter list or return type because they can be inferred from context, place the capture list at the very start of the closure followed by the in keyword. Weak and unowned references. Define a capture and a closure as an unowned reference when the closure and the instance it captures will always refer to each other and will always be deallocated at the same time. Conversely, define a capture as a weak reference when the captured reference may become nil at some point in the future. Weak references are always of an optional type and automatically become nil when the instance they reference is deallocated. This enables you to check for their existence within the closure's body. Note. If the captured reference will never become nil, it should always be captured as an unowned reference rather than a weak reference. An unowned reference is the appropriate capture method to use to resolve the strong reference cycle in the HTML element example from strong reference cycles for closures above. Here's how you write the HTML element class to avoid the cycle. This implementation of HTML element is identical to the previous implementation apart from the addition of a capture list within the as HTML closure. In this case, the capture list is unowned self inside square brackets, which means capture self as an unowned reference rather than as a strong reference. You can create and print an HTML element as before. Here's how the references look with the capture list in place. This time, the capture of self by the closure is an unowned reference and does not keep a stronghold on the HTML element instance it is captured. If you set the strong reference from the paragraph variable to nil, the HTML element instance is deallocated as can be seen from the printing of its deinitializer message in the example below. For more information about capture lists, see Capture Lists.